Chloe's been dead for five months today. I need to go back. I've tried a hundred times by now, but my powers are gone. I've tried to get them back, but nothing works. Maybe this will. I know it's desperate, but it's all I've left to try. Life or death. Build me up just to tear me back. Down, still the only thing I need. Now, a not so picture perfect moment. I found in pieces.
one moment, she was sitting in an unknown car in an unknown place, clutching Chloe's hand like it's the only thing keeping her from drowning. The next moment, their lips are locked together. Her body wrapped Max up in its warmth, arms pressing her close with desperation. She sunk into Chloe, breathing her all around. It was startling, but not in a million years would she call it unpleasant. Chloe must have sensed her surprise, because she half-heartedly pulled away. Her cheeks were streaked with tears. Max didn't need a mirror to know, and so were hers. Chloe searched her eyes. Max, it's me. The other me. Okay. She let go, somewhat awkwardly. Sorry, we started and couldn't stop. It's, uh, it's okay. The way she tasted it lingered on Max's tongue. It brought memories of another time. Another kiss shared in a moment of despair. Max didn't know what she saw in her face, but she turned away like the sight was too much to bear. She was leaning against the silvery hood of a car, probably the same car they were just in. There are benches ahead, a railing and sparse trees. Beyond the railing is the morning view of a gently sloping valley and a small town nearby. No idea where they might be. Her back still turned, Chloe took a deep, tremulous breath. Here. She faced Max and gave her a phone, headphones wrapped around it. It's your phone. You just got done recording this. Listen to it. I, I need a moment alone right now. She walked up to the railing and leaned over, hugging herself. Though she remained quiet, her shoulders were shaking. Swallowing hard, Max put an earbud on and tapped the phone screen. It went directly to the recording app and displayed a just-recorded message. Play. Hi, Max. It's me, Max from the past. Yep, five months in and time travel is still weird as fuck. So, I'm about to go away. I've struggled with that, you know? I wish I could say not anymore, but it's still scary. Sometime real soon, this person I've become will disappear. I keep telling myself that it's not really dying, but... <sighs> Talk about depressing. I need to shut up. I know you already feel like ass. I'm thankful for what you did. And this is the price we pay. Besides, some of my memories are better left forgotten. I'm recording this to give you a few quick pointers. The details are in the journal, so be sure to read it as soon as you can. So, I don't know how things went down for you, but it's been rough on this end. Leaving the powers behind wasn't an option. I've done some questionable things I didn't think I'd ever do. And you learned stuff about yourself that might scare you. But please believe me, it's all necessary. It's all for the better. This is how it needs to be, because the alternatives are way more awful. I don't know how many skills you'll retain when you take over. Maybe you had to fend for yourself in the apocalypse and you're even better. Who knows? Anyway, here goes. You're a decent shot, but not stellar. You're kind of shit at hand-to-hand -hand and a klutzy mess. Totally hopeless. But the time powers make up for it. You can soft rewind for a good three to four hours now. Super fast, super slow, however you like. Just keep practicing and pushing the limits. Uh, sorry. I call it soft rewind when you remain in place, and hard rewind when you literally turn everything back to the same spot you were at. Like going back to class the very first time. Remember? It's happened again a few times. I haven't figured out how to control it yet, but it has to be possible. Other than that, you can move while rewinding for a while, which is still rough as hell, but insanely useful. There's lots of room for improvement there. Strange enough, you can't slow time going forward at all. And then there's divisions, which can be a huge problem if you're in the middle of doing something important. They just happen. Don't know when, don't know why. Sometimes it's just a flash. Sometimes they'll take you down cold. 
As far as I know, whatever you see can't be changed, so prepare for it instead. It would help a lot if at least fade and hurt like a bitch. Speaking of pain, migraines happen often, but nosebleeds and fainting, not so much anymore. Only if you really overdo it. Just make sure Chloe is around when you train. Tough to work out the time logistics, but you'll manage. She's used to it by now. Chloe and I, well, we're a couple. Like, real serious couple. Hopelessly in love. So she's gonna have a hard time adjusting, I imagine. Don't take it too personal, okay? She loves you so much. I, I can't even explain. I know you'll feel the same way eventually. I can promise that you won't regret it. I'm gonna be so pissed if you forget your gay for me coffee. Oh my god, get back to your corner, donkey ears. This is supposed to be private. Fine, fine. Jesus. Listen, whatever you do, treat her right, okay? She's doing better now. She's on meds, antidepressants. Make sure she takes them. I started too, but I stopped because they messed with the time powers for some reason. It's been... it's been real hard. Major PTSD and all that. We'd have lost it without each other. She's put up with enough of my bullshit. Don't you fucking hurt her now, okay? God, what am I saying? You're me. You'll be fawning all over her. It's like I can't help myself. By the way, because of our power, You'll be tempted to keep secrets from her, to protect her, to avoid an argument, whatever. Just don't bother. Newsflash, we're terrible liars around Chloe, and she's on to us. She can tell every time, and I mean that. Every damn time. I swear. So be real with her. Share the burden. Tell her everything. You'll be glad you did, and she can handle it. Anyway. Whatever the stupid magical tornado was, it seems like it was a one-time thing. I've twisted reality into a pretzel these past few months, and nothing's happened. I have no damn clue why Arcadia Bay had to be destroyed. Either it was all about Chloe dying in that filthy bathroom for some reason, or it didn't have anything to do with me after all. I'll warn you though, get used to seeing weird shit. More and more of these powers show me that there's this whole world within our world that's... that simply can't be explained by any means. It pisses me off. <sighs> there's so much more. I started talking about Sean fucking Prescott and had to rewind all of it. It was taking too long. I can't do it justice here anyway. Just read the journal. I spared no details about the awful shit he's done to us. Because I knew you'd be reading it eventually, and I want you motivated. I've done everything I could. I'm gonna go kiss my girlfriend some more now. Feel free to keep at it when I'm gone. Oh yeah, Chloe said you were wondering about the gun. Don't worry, we're the good guys. Kind of. And yes, you have killed people. There was no other choice. You'll just have to deal with it. I know you can. Because I have. Don't let us down, Max Caulfield. The voice went quiet. The recording stopped. Wow, sir. Chloe turned to look at her. She seemed calmer now. Damn, girl. You still say that? Pretty appropriate for the situation, don't you think? Yeah, no kidding. It's real heavy stuff. Did you listen to it? Just a bit. Till you shoot me away. You done? Yeah. I've killed people. Wow. She told you that right away. Chloe leaned back on the railing and crossed her arms. Yeah, we both have. Otherwise, we'd be worse than dead. You too? Chloe shrugged a shoulder. She didn't seem proud of it, but neither did she seem repentant. She was just stating facts. Who? What's happening? Prescott goons. There's some serious shit going down, Max. Way bigger than Arcadia Bay. We were about to end it when you showed up. End it? End it how? How do you think? We tracked down the bastard and you were getting past security. 
You're an unstoppable assassin, girlfriend. Max blinked at her. Holy shit, Chloe. Yeah, like I said, heavy stuff. Take as long as you need. Max leaned back against the car. This was a bit much. They were killers? Fugitives? Outlaws for sure. It was as if getting Chloe back created their own private post-apocalypse. Was this truly the only life they could have? Was this all she could give her? Miserable death or kill to survive? As she stared into her hand wondering how much pain she might have caused her so far, Chloe walked around to the back seat door and rummaged through her junk. Their junk, I should say. She came over and handed Max a plain black notebook. After what she'd seen of this reality, she half expected Death Note to be inscribed on the thing. Your journal isn't nearly as colorful these days. You basically wrote it as a guide for the new you. Or the old you. Or, uh, fuck. You know what I mean. She numbly flipped through it. About three-fourths full. There were some photos, hardly any drawings, and loads of handwriting. It'll take a while to read all this. <laughs> no, it won't. What do you mean? You can read it in an instant, dummy. As far as I can tell from this side, anyway. Oh, right. Time powers. Duh. Chloe gently closed the notebook while it was still in her hands. Her fingers lingered on Max's. Don't do it right now, though. Information overload and all that. She said there's some gruesome shit in there. And you look rattled enough already. You haven't read it? And incur the wrath of Mighty Max? I don't think so. Huh. She just got done telling me to share everything with you. Yeah, I trust you to do that, and you trust me not to read your personal diary. Makes sense, doesn't it? She gave Max a fond smile and a nudge towards the passenger side. Come on, get in. You can ask me whatever you like while we drive back to Time Warp HQ, or you can keep sorting out your thoughts in silence. Whatever you want. Like I said, take your time. You don't ever get tired of the puns, do you? Nope, and you know you love them. Partners in crime, Super Max. She put up her hand for a high five. Oh. Come on, say it. Don't leave me hanging. Max rolled her eyes and gave her hand a half-hearted smack. Partners in time, you dork. Always and forever. Let's go. They got into the tiny Nissan something. Max wondered what happened to her old junker. Probably abandoned on the side of the road after it exhaled its last sputtering, soot-spewing breath. Chloe cradled her phone into the car's sound system and navigated through menus for a moment. There. For old times. Music came on, quiet enough for them to still have a conversation over it. She never knew the name of the song, but it vividly painted the memory in her head like it happened yesterday. Chloe dancing on her bed, puffing a joint, telling her to shake her bony white ass. It made her grin like she was standing in their room again. Love to see that smile. The way she looked at Max, it was like a portrait of the word tender. She had to look away. Her cheeks felt really hot all of a sudden. <sighs> Haven't seen that in forever. You are the cutest thing. Shit, man. I need to dial it back though. I don't want to be creepy. Chloe started the engine and got the car going. Yikes. Manual transmission. Don't ever rewind in the middle of a moving car, by the way. You'll end up with your butt flat on the middle of the road. I'm sure there's a hilarious story somewhere in there. Nah, not really. We tested a lot of things. For science, right? Uh, didn't stop me from laughing my ass off as I drove up next to you and picked you up. You're well known for your empathy. Now I'm curious, what else did you test? Well, let's see. It's not just moving cars. It's like rewinding locks out of normal space or something, taking away whatever momentum you had. Or rather, it's somehow anchoring you to the Earth's movement so you don't shoot out of orbit. We've guessed. So if you throw yourself off of a building and rewind at the last moment, you are basically Batman, is what I'm saying. Are you serious? I jumped off a building to test this? Uh, not right away. First, you know, a tall ledge, then the top of a bus, then a tree. Baby steps. Baby steps right off of a cliff. 
You've described it as sinking into a pool of jello. The air thickens around you and holds you up. All I see is you at the top, then you a foot from the floor, hopping down to ground level without a scratch. Sometimes there's like this weird ghost after image in between, depending on how short you make the rewind. Freaky as hell. That's... wow. She hadn't known this before jumping off the lighthouse, and yet she did it anyway. She'd been counting on a hard rewind, to put it in Betamax's terminology, which apparently was a rare and as yet uncontrollable occurrence. Now I'm afraid to ask what else you tested. Knowledge is power. Here are some other fun facts. The limit on how much stuff you can carry through time is complicated, but half your weight is a good rule of thumb. More than that, it stays behind. You can't rewind past any time you were unconscious. Not yet, anyway. Also, you don't actually have to reach out with your hand like a doofus. That's just something you do for some reason. Like when a Jedi wave a hand for mind control. She tapped her lips with a finger as she steered with her other hand. It seemed they were heading away from the town. Mm, say you tear your shirt. It won't mend if you're wearing it, but take it off and you'll watch it fix itself. Oh, here's something pretty important. You don't heal by rewinding. You stay tired, you stay hurt, you stay dirty. That sounds like I ran into trouble at some point. Understatement of the year. There's been some really close calls, Max. I'm talking some bullets in midair. Close. Let's just say there's a good reason why you carry fail-safe photos everywhere you go. Freeze bullets in midair, though? That's pretty damn cool. Yeah. Okay, Neo. Sorry to break it to you, but you're not the one. Max made an eloquent gesture with her phone. Don't worry, she already told me I'll never be a Kung Fu master. I'm serious, though. You've been hurt pretty bad. You can totally get killed outright if caught by surprise. And you can't photo jump away if you're dead. Okay, okay, I get it. Speaking of... She checked her phone. It's been 15 minutes since she showed up. How you feeling? Is your head okay? Yeah. Y yeah, I'm alright. Why? Uh-huh. You often get migraines after a while. Sometimes you'll even pass out. Wow, awesome. Looking forward to that. You hate photo jumping. What a shocker. Man, sounds like we've been super busy. She looked at Max. There was that playful twinkle again. You don't know the first of it, girlfriend. She wagged her eyebrows in a suggestive grin in place. She really couldn't help herself, could she? Well, Max could play that game too. Oh yeah? Did you maybe chicken out again after I took you up on another dare? No, oh, for fuck's sake. None of you will let me live that down. You caught me totally off guard. I didn't know what to do. You talk a big game, girlfriend. But from my end, it seems like I always make the first move. She thought Chloe would bullshit right back at her. But instead, she went quiet and thoughtful for a moment. It's true, you know. You've made the first move every time. I have plenty of chances, but I think about getting rejected and freak out. She gave Max a sidelong glance, but didn't meet her eyes for long. And now it's only worse, because you know how I feel about you. Like, you know how fucking desperate in love I am. And if I try anything, it's like I'm pressuring you. I don't want that. I would suck for you to feel that, you know? Like you have to. So here I am with an amnesiac girlfriend and a huge girl boner. Oh god, shut up, Chloe. You're making it so much worse. Max was starting to feel bad, but she couldn't help but laugh. You were so right earlier. This is really weird. I know. Fucking time travel, man. Her hand was on the stick. Max covered it with her own. Chloe, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I spent all of this time wishing I could be with you, and now I got my wish, so I don't plan to ever leave your side again. Chloe beamed at her and quickly restrained it, like self-conscious of her reaction. That's awesome. It makes me stupid happy to hear that. You don't even know. Chloe, demure and bashful, I never thought I'd see the day. Would you maybe say it's hella awesome? <laughs> Dude, that's from the past. We kind of phased out Hella without even trying. It ran its course pretty fast. Hella fast? Yep, there it goes. Already got old. <laughs> I'm glad, to be honest. 
Rest in peace, Hella. We hardly knew you. Amen. They glided into a comfortable silence, just watching the increasingly winding road for a while. The playlist moved on to other songs Max didn't recognize. A bit heavier on distortion than she was usually into, but not anything she'd frown at. She simply let it sink in some more. Chloe was sitting next to her. She was dead, but now she was not. And holy shit, desperately in love. Her words. She didn't have to worry about rejection anytime soon. There were far more trees around them now. Wherever they were going, it seemed pretty remote. She should ask about it, she thought. She should ask about a hundred other things, really. But she'd rather put to rest the nagging concern at the back of her head. So, me and Max, huh? Chloe cringed a bit. It started as me Max. It morphed, somehow. Somehow. Hey, you sound pretty mean in the note, and you did sacrifice my ass, so, me and Max. The words made a clump at the pit of Max's stomach. Chloe must have noticed the change in her expression, because she reached over and gave her leg a quick shake, like trying to jolt her out of a bad dream. But shit. I was joking. You joke about that. <laughs> I should have sacrificed your sorry but you know? That's how we cope, I guess. I'm sorry. I just... I relived it over and over in my head for so long. It was unbearable, Chloe. I couldn't live with what I did to you. Whoa. Hey, you didn't do anything, okay? I asked you to go back. It was wrong to saddle you with such a horrible choice. We talked about it later. You could totally see why future you would leave that note. You told me how remorse would tear you up inside, little by little. How you'd try and try and never get over losing me. It was depressing to think about, but it sure boosted my ego. <laughs> Betamax sounds way smarter than I was. For a while, I really thought I could cope, but... You are the exact same person, dumbass. She simply had time to think about it instead of being forced into an impossible decision like you. Having time to think makes it even worse, Chloe. There was nothing impulsive about it. In the end, I decided to knowingly destroy everything just so I could be here. Bullshit. You didn't destroy a damn thing. How can you say that? How are you not disgusted with me right now? Oh, please. It's not like you set up a bomb in the middle of town. Some insane powers got dumped into your lap. You tried to do the right thing at every turn, then a fucking tornado destroyed everything. Not you. And even if you had, so what? I'd have done the same thing. I'd let the whole city's burn to the ground just to save you. I wouldn't even care how you felt about it. What kind of hypocrite would I be to get mad at you right now? Yeah, nobody's worth so many lives, I know that. But that's never been the point. We are worth it all to each other, and that's all that matters to me. Though firm and full of conviction, her voice remained calm throughout. Every word in its proper place, every bit of emphasis on the proper word. A well-thought-out argument. We've had this conversation before, haven't we? She gave Max a complicit look, like they were both in on the same grand con. Not word for word, but we had come to terms with things, you know? We couldn't just zombie forward and let guilt tear us apart. So we talked about stuff. A lot of stuff. Let it all out. No shame, no judgments. And then in the end it turned out, even with all the awful death and destruction, I was happy that you chose me, and so were you. Might be ugly and selfish, but it's also fucking amazing to have each other. So no, I have no desire to yell at you. Max Caulfield, get over yourself already. You are not the first couple in history willing to kill for one another, and you will not be the last. She caught a glimpse of a doe as the car made a left onto a wide dirt road. They made eye contact before it ran deeper into the woods, and then it was gone. Hey. Chloe's hand was on her shoulder, her eyes alternating between the road and Max. You're nearly there. I don't blame you, okay? Stop beating yourself up. Max touched her hand and tried to smile reassuringly. I'll be okay. I promise. You better, or I'll have to make you take my happy pills for a while. Time powers be damned. Huh. She gestured with the phone again. She said to make sure you take them. 
Yeah, you're such a bitch about it. How is... I mean... Do you want to talk about that? Not much to talk about, really. It helped me keep it together and not fly off the handle at the stupidest things. There's no shame in it. At least one of us should be somewhat sane. You're the sane one? That's scary. Bite my shiny metal ass. To be honest, I probably could have used a prescription even before all this fucked up shit went down. Mom always wanted me to get into therapy too, but you know how much of an asshole I was to her. I'd rather get baked and feel sorry for myself. I was such an idiot. That's harsh, Chloe. You had to deal with a lot. It takes time. Well, at least time is on our side now, right? Okay, now you're trying too hard. That one didn't even make sense. Everyone's a critic. Eyes ahead. My drama queen, behold your domain. The trees parted to reveal a small clearing. Max expected some kind of cabin in the woods. But, parked out of sight of the main road was a huge Greyhound bus, except with much fewer windows. It was painted two shades of dark blue with the usual logo in the middle, and every glass pane that remained was tinted black and highly reflective. She gave Chloe a sidelong look. A bus? It sure looks like a plain old bus, doesn't it? That thing is ours? How'd you even drive it up here? She parked the car next to a monster. From where Max was sitting, it towered out of sight above her. Mad skills. That's how. Come on. Let's go inside. You'll see. They got out, and with a suspicious eyebrow arched, Max followed her to the entrance at the front. She pressed a fob in her keychain, and the door swooshed open like they were in frickin' Star Trek. Chloe turned and bowed flamboyantly, gesturing at the entryway. After you, your grace. You're such a goon. Not quite knowing what to expect, she went up the steps into the driver's cabin. One look inside, and she had to stop for a moment. Whoa. Chloe climbed up behind her. Actually, I think this one deserves a full-fledged, fully loaded... Wowzers. This is... it's... It was, for one, way beyond their means. There was no way in a thousand years they could afford the leather couches, marble counters, kitchen sinks, two of them, stove, a gigantic HD TV. The list was long enough to make her dizzy. Past a doorway, she glimpsed a standing mirror and a bed so big she was beginning to think this bus might transcend the laws of physics altogether. This thing was to Frank's old RV what a posh mansion is to Chloe's junkyard hideout. Chloe, this is nuts. Wait till you use the shower. It'll melt you into a puddle. This is crazy expensive. Who the hell paid for it? Chloe gave her a flat look. Are you honestly asking me this question? We stole it? What? No, 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 no. Legally purchased, registered, custom plated, all legit. Well, except with an alias. Then... Rewind powers. Online stock trading. You do the math. Are you serious? As serious as our multiple bank accounts. We are the 1%, baby. She stepped further in. It was like entering an ad for retirees. With all the white leather and appliance and oh-so-shiny tile. It didn't look very lived in. Folded clothes next to a messy laundry basket. A bit of clutter in and around the sinks half-empty bag of chips and a crumpled beanie on the TV couch, a sweater thrown over the armrest, and fast food trash on a nearby table. Either they didn't spend a ton of time there, or they'd done a good job so far curbing Chloe's chaotic ways. Not that you can leave a lot of stuff lying around inside an RV if you have to be on the move often. She turned to Chloe. For some reason, her head was starting to really hurt. Okay, I think it's about time you told me what's going on. I'll be honest, I'd imagine we'd be trying to put a life together, in Seattle or something like that. Not living large somewhere in the woods, doing missions and assassinating people. Yeah, this wasn't the original plan, that's for sure. She took a closer look at Max. You're getting pale. Are you feeling alright? Just a headache. I'll be fine. She was immediately by Max's side, gently pushing her to the couch. Bad chance this is just a headache. That was a five-month jump, Time Lord. Come on, just lean back for a while. But I did five years without... <clears throat> the pain escalated quickly, 
Suddenly, there was a white blotch in the middle of her vision, and it kept growing and growing and growing. It was fucking unbearable. Chloe cradled her like she'd become a glass figurine that might shatter at any moment. Max, you're bleeding. Just relax. This is good. We're safe here. She felt herself sinking into the cushions. And just like that, consciousness gave way to the pain.